Before we get to today's death battle, we just want to thank HBO Max for sponsoring this episode. Give him the deets, Ringmaster! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the amazing world of HBO Max! On HBO Max, animation isn't just for kids. They have all-time favorites like Robot Chicken, Samurai Jack, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Wait, really? I didn't know they have anime. Time to get your Ghibli fix then. There's a ton on there. Start streaming today. Download the app or visit hbomax.com to start your free trial. You got that? Okay, time for the main event. Let's get this death battle started. Sir Thomas Brown once said, every man is his own greatest enemy, and as it were, his own executioner. For many, every day is a struggle to restrain the beast within. Or else you might turn into a big ol' honkin' werewolf. Such as Saberwolf, the savage wolfman of killer instinct. And John Talbane, the kung fu canine darkstalker. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Deep in the heart of Germany's Black Forest lies the ruins of Saberwolf Castle, home to a monster of unspeakable ferocity. I mean, duh, it's called Saberwolf Castle. What else do you expect? But that monster used to be a man, Baron Conrad von Saberwolf. Once an aristocrat of wealth and status, his life would drastically change the day he discovered a secret laboratory deep within the castle's bowels. He stumbled onto a treasure trove of monster hunting weapons and relics straight out of his family's secret history, including a mysterious large claw, which he accidentally cut himself on. Upon the light of the next full moon, the Baron transformed into... A vampire! N no, a werewolf. This is the werewolf episode. Come on, Wiz. Spooky castle in the middle of nowhere. A weird cursed artifact. He's got Vaughn in his name. This is totally a vampire backstory. Now, that's for next year. <laughs> on that night, Baron Saberwolf became a bloodthirsty beast. You know, the name really screwed him from the start there. Almost like it was destiny. Well, originating as early as classical antiquity, the fable of men turning into wolves under a full moon is a staple of European folklore. Real life victims of so called lycanthropy most likely suffered from porphyria, hypertrichosis, or rabies. Sabi rampaged all over the country, killing everyone he found. Because as a big hairy demon dog, being a werewolf means your strength, speed, and tough hide are off the charts. Oh, and it makes you great at basketball. With his razor sharp claws, Saberwolf can easily tear through solid steel. Also, any one of his cuts can potentially pass his curse to new victims. But he's pretty happy using those claws to brutally rush down any foe. With a howl to the sky, Saberwolf can amp himself up or tap into his killer instinct to enter a feral rage. In this state, any sense of shame or repression is eliminated as he truly becomes a mindless monster. It also increases his chip damage and allows him to cancel auto doubles into other auto- Yeah, yeah, it makes him even more stronger and faster. We get it. And it's Top it off, he can summon bats that are on fire. Gotta be honest, not sure where this one comes from. He's a vampire in a fursuit! Called it. After a night of painting the town red with blood, Saberwolf awoke to the nightmare that would be the rest of his life. Yeah, he wasn't exactly a fan of the whole werewolf thing, so he did anything he could to stop being a full moon furry. But science and magic couldn't cut it. He descended into madness, but eventually found a possible savior. Your friendly neighborhood soul-crushing megacorporation, Ultratech. AKA Evil Walmart. Or just Walmart. Ultratech promised Saberwolf a cure for his lycanthropy, but in reality, their experiments only gave him cybernetic implants in his arm. Cool! And extended his werewolf form to last indefinitely. Oh. Also cool? But Saberwolf was none the wiser. In return for a cure that would never come, he agreed to fight on Ultratech's behalf in their Killer Instinct tournament. What a goober! This moron ran around a creepy castle, bumped into something sharp like a dumbass, and now he might not even be potty trained? Then he got duped by the most obviously evil company ever to ruin his life even more. This guy is either the unluckiest schmuck on the planet, or just high off his ass on opium. Actually, he was dangerously addicted to opiates for a time, which only drove him further into madness. Wow, this guy's life sucks. 
Regardless, Saberwolf was a fierce competitor. Within the Killer Instinct tournament, he battled and defeated a Nez Perce Warrior Thunder, the metallic super soldier Fulgore, and an actual dinosaur. He's certainly among a high tier of the competition. Like Tusk, who can summon friggin' meteors out of the sky? Based on how large this projectile is, its impact should be equivalent to over a kiloton of TNT. Sure, Sabi can't magically call down space rocks, but he can survive a hit like that and dish it back. In the tournament, he won 17 fights in a row. Until he met the warrior monk, Jacob. Uh, protagonist, right? And he got his hairy cheeks clapped by an alien McFlurry named Glacius. But even after the tournament, Saberwolf proved strong enough to tear out his own cybernetic implants. While conducting experiments on him, Ultratech's Android CEO Arya had noted that the older a werewolf gets, the more vicious and skilled it becomes, while the loss in strength and agility is negligible. And he proved it in his rematch with Glacius. Who's the clapper of cheeks now, you projectile spamming snow cone? Most impressive, considering Glacius once got the drop on Arya, whom, according to an official novella, can react within a nanosecond. Holy crap! He's not just your average werewolf, he's a super werewolf! A fighting tournament ass kicker! Though he will sadly always be on the hunt for a cure that doesn't exist, Saberwolf is one of the most dangerous monsters and men to ever live. <laughs> Welcome to the Demon Realm of Makai, a dimension inhabited by powerful beings known as Darkstalkers. Basically, your classic Hollywood movie monsters mixed with anime powers. Makai is ruled by several noble clans, including the Kroots, a family of beasts. Like werewolves? Including one prominent member, Baraba the Wolf Lord, who had a son named Galen. Which means hungry wolf. Really thinking outside the box with that one, huh? Perhaps he'd prefer his English name, John Tal Bane. Yeah, but his dad is named a freaking Wolf Lord. That's so awesome, it almost makes me forget he's a total deadbeat, just like my dad. Did I say that out loud? Things got worse. One of the Wolf Lord's enemies, the Demon Jetta, sent an assassin to kill John's mother. Dick move. Moms are off limits. Now a werewolf and an orphan, John grew up pretty pissed off at just about everything, especially the humans that hunted him when he transformed. In the light of a full moon, John can't help but embrace his crew's heritage. And under a red blood moon, he risks losing all sense of self and becoming a ravenous beast. John's story was about the same as any werewolves until he happened upon a man who was also half monster and who defeated John in combat. With martial arts! Hell yeah! I keep telling people, the only way to solve violence is with a good pair of nunchucks. John's new friend did not offer violence, but control. Seeing little other option, John accepted a life with his new sensei. While we don't know for sure what fighting style he was trained in, based on the time period, location, and his stance, we can guess that he was learning Shotokan Karate. Inspired by Bushido and Zen Buddhism, Shotokan Karate's focus is on controlled calm, a strong defense, and a rejection of unnecessary violence. Basically the exact opposite of being a werewolf. Well, sign me up for his doggy dojo, because I have no idea how all that Zen stuff translates to moves like his climb chaser and wild circular. Rejection of unnecessary violence? My ass. This dude's just showing up. By embracing his werewolf speed, John can bash foes with his nunchaku and move so fast he appears to be in two places at once. And by tapping into his inner energy, you know, key, John can perform the beast cannon and rock it around the room like a doggy meteor of pain. But that's nothing compared to the almighty dragon cannon. Oh yeah. So much for being zen, right? That dragon can incinerate a whole wall. John's training seemed to do the trick until his master was killed by a group of bandits. Where was your flaming dragon there, man? Enraged yet again by the cruelty of mankind, but tempered by his master's compassion, John became conflicted over his role in a morally gray world, unwilling to fight, but always ready. And by combining his martial arts skills with his natural werewolf powers, he became a wolf man to be reckoned with. His razor sharp claws can slice through steel and even punch holes in powerful dark stalkers like Lilith. He's also got those great doggo senses like super hearing and smell. To demonstrate, I've modulated dummy senses up to the same degree as those of a wolf. I see you find my frequent humiliation Amusing. Oh, I do. Boop. In open climates, wolf ears can hear sounds up to 10 miles away. Boomstick, somebody is outside stealing your dune buggy. <laughs> no, they're... Wait, really? <laughs> and their sense of smell is over a hundred times greater than that of a human's. 
Oh, good. The thief got away. What did you smell that told you that? Salt. Lots and lots of salt. With nothing but grit in a thick layer of what I'm sure is unreasonably soft fur that you just want to scratch behind the ears, John has survived an onslaught of missiles from the Monster Hunter BB Hood. Wait, wait, wait. Who gave Little Red Riding Hood military grade ordnance? I want to shake their hand. We've seen John dodge bullets up close, but he's bragged about being as fast as light speed. Sure, Jan. I mean, John. And he can take down these 5,500 pound alien robots called Heat Souls, which can fly through outer space. Also, it's worth mentioning that Darkstalker society is broken up into different classes based on the strength and power of the individual. John is a B plus class Darkstalker, which is way above average, so it makes sense to compare him to other B plus classers to gauge his limits, like Anacharis, who sank all of ancient Egypt underground. Or QB, who could lift a massive beehive high above this castle. Based on its size relative to the castle, this hive would have to weigh over 30 million tons. That's like lifting over 300 aircraft carriers. And John's way more jacked than she is. And imagine getting stung by one of those bees. Even with his amazing power, after decades of torment, John had resigned himself to a life of misery and solitude. Until he met the cutest cat girl around. Now, we all know cats are usually super evil and Satan's presence on Earth, but Felicia taught him that humans actually aren't so bad. Wait, wait. So years of martial arts discipline couldn't temper his bad side, but getting laid did? You know what? I, I believe in. As far as we know, they're just friends. Yeah, and I'm sure the internet could give you 34 good reasons why that's bullshit, Wiz. Well, despite what DeviantArt thinks, Felicia would help John conquer his dark side. Literally. Like, he literally fought his dark side and killed it. I always thought that was supposed to be, like, metaphor stuff, but I guess that isn't the weirdest thing we've talked about. And with that victory, John finally claimed dominance over his monstrous identity and committed himself to a life of compassion. But John will always be a dark stalker. If he relapses, he'll be as deadly as ever. There will always be a monster inside of him, just waiting to be let loose. Existence with humans is impossible. That is why we are called dark stalkers. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But speaking of howling in the middle of the night, let's talk about Blue Chew. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance so you're always ready to go. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them day or night, full stomach or empty, anytime when the opportunity arises. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. And discreet is my middle name. And it changed from Winston after, uh... Long story. Right now, we've got a special deal just for you. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code BATTLE. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code BATTLE to try it free. Blue Chew's the better, cheaper option, and we wanted to thank them for sponsoring the show. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code BATTLE to try it free. But right now, it's time for a death battle! I have no forgiveness left, monster.
rising. I need to see a therapist to tell them how awesome that was! Saberwolf was a ferocious foe, but John had a lot going for him in most regards. For instance, John was trained in genuine martial arts and practiced them for decades, while Saberwolf relied entirely on instinct. You mean killer instinct, eh? You're no fun. But hey, remember how Sabi defeated Glacius, who attacked Arya in less than a nanosecond? Technically, that puts Saberwolf's reaction capability well within light speed, which John claimed he could match. But that was just bragging, right? Hardly. Those Huitzel units John fought were capable of flying across the galaxy, hundreds of millions of light years, in only a short time. This is important because fellow Darkstalkers Morgan and Dimitri have intercepted Huitzels in mid flight combat. Yeah, those two are A classers, but B plus Darkstalkers like John have kept up with the higher classes in speed plenty of times. Hell, BB Hood can, and she's a C class. When it comes to the Darkstalker class system, speed is much less a factor than power and energy levels. To be frank, even if John was half Morgan's speed, he'd still be faster than Saberwolf. So, if anything, he wasn't bragging enough. He was way stronger, too. QB's also a B plus Darkstalker, and she lifted that 30 million ton beehive. Way more than anything Saberwolf can pull off. And when it came to ranged options, I think a flaming inferno key dragon beats out a lone discount fire bat any day. While his application is different, we can gauge the level of key John has at his disposal by factoring Anakaris sinking all of Egypt. So the only logical thing to do was measure the total weight of ancient Egypt. No, really, we did that. Most buildings in the period were made of clay bricks and about 4.3 meters tall. Adding the known volume of the pyramids and considering additional land, we determined Anacarsis Key had to be strong enough to move a civilization weighing over 1.2 trillion tons. And that's not even counting all the people or cats. They got a shitload of cats. Now that sounds crazy for an old school horror monster like a mummy or a werewolf, but Darkstalkers aren't quite like the classics. At this fight's core though, John won because of the kind of werewolf he was. Through years of struggle, Saberwolf never found any means to tame his savagery, while John had successfully managed to regulate his wild side, giving a level of precision, skill, and control the poor Baron couldn't even begin to understand. Saberwolf was vicious and unrelenting, but John had the training, the power, and yes, the flaming Inferno Dragons to score a brutal victory. Brutal doesn't even cut it. I mean, how much blood was that? You know, it had to be at least a gallon. The winner is John Talbane. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DB merch at store.roosterteeth.com. Attention, blue team! This is the red team! We are here to destroy you! I got a tank! People with tanks are never outnumbered! <laughs>